Welcome to another episode of Pursuit 365 Real Estate and Finance Fridays with yours truly, Shelly Smee, your host for today, and we are doing a solo show. So today I'm going to discuss a few of the top tips that I've picked up along the way, sometimes from home inspections, other times uh, from trial and error, and some of them are actually even common sense. So I hope you enjoy um, some of my suggestions around staging your home, maintaining your home, and from the flip side, what you should look for as a buyer. So this is a concept that I think we've all heard the commercials saying, oh, you've gone nose blind. Well, I think people can also become just blind blind to some of the minor deficiencies that they've lived with in their property for a long time. And they may not even realize that when um, a fresh set of eyes looks on those things that they actually should really be taken care of before listing the property. Some of my top pet peeves are dirty grouting in bathrooms, um, paint that is chipped and or badly scuffed, especially around the window casings and baseboards. Um, although I think it's a great idea just to give a fresh look at paint through the whole house. Paint colors that really are unique, I guess. Um, everybody has different tastes and different decor styles, but if you're someone with a very um, flamboyant style and have things like, say, a red dining room, I would suggest that any very dark colors in a room, unless it's, say, chalkboard paint on a part of a kitchen that is a fun feature, that you have those dark colors painted before listing the house or photographing the house for sale. One of the least expensive things that you can do to bring up the whole level of your property is a fresh coat of paint in every room. You may think that uh, some rooms might get away with not doing it, but having the whole house freshly painted is such a bonus to the new buyer and um, fresh paint covers up a lot of other deficiencies that may be present. Um, there is even a kind of paint you can get to cover up the smell of smoke, although I would suggest a ozonation treatment for the home if there's a heavy smoker odor because quite often that odor can come through the paint eventually. So there's another topic smokers and homes where people have smoked. Um, certainly we see this a lot in estate sales and uh, there are a number of environmental treatment companies that offer what's called an ozonation service. Uh, nobody, no pets, no um, beings should be in the home while this is being done. Um, clients that have had it done um, often stay somewhere else for the weekend or have it done while they're on vacation. And the ozonation process um, does actually get rid of even some of the most tough uh, smoke smells. Um, pet odors, to some extent, depending on if um, there has been urination on hardwoods, which Unfortunately, that is a smell that often doesn't go away, as is the smell I've discovered of rodents. I have a horror story about that that we won't go into, but needless to say, if you're ever in a basement or in a home where it smells like there might be uh, pet urine, um, also really have an exterminator handy because chances are there is some kind of rodent infestation uh, because I've come to, to realize and to learn over um, a horrifying experience that um, the smell of rats is basically very similar to um, a litter box. 
that hasn't been cleaned. I know that's kind of disgusting to talk on such a highbrow real estate program, but um, rodents are real and they can wreak havoc with an attic. Um, they can wreak havoc with uh, chewing through um, electrical cables and all sorts of uh, yummy, chewy items that they like to destroy in homes. So one of the other things that we often will encourage or require in some cases, in my opinion, it should be required, is for any older home um, to have a pre-listing inspection. A pre-listing inspection will help identify any items that have not um, been repaired or items in a order of urgency that could be repaired and or gives the buyer a heads up of the things that need to be done to the home and also gives some level of comfort to the realtor and either the executor or the home seller of where the home should be priced and no surprises um, during subject removal period. There have been many, many times where I've been accompanying uh, my buyer clients on an inspection and we discover something that the homeowner should have known or ought to have known if they'd been living in the house for um, a number of years. Um, and in some cases, tried to fix, maybe did a handyman special on the weekend, thinking that nobody would notice that um, it's like the cheapest thing you can do and you picked it up at Home Depot and tried to get it done in a couple hours. Please don't. If you are not a skilled tradesperson, I highly advise you to um, go to TaskRabbit, which is a great website to find random people to do odd jobs and handyman things around your home. Or if it's something that requires permitting, please hire a qualified tradesperson, especially if you live in a condo. And oh my gosh, yes, we're going to go there. Doing renovations in condominiums without the proper approval from your strata council can be a huge headache, both for you down the line in case the buyer decides to sue you because they've had to take out your do-it-yourself work and have it redone properly um, by qualified tradespeople and or... If you're a buyer, you should be asking your agent if there is an alteration agreement or renovation approval request in the large stack of strata documents that will be reviewed when you buy a condo. Um, I'll do another, I think I did a, a different episode a few weeks ago on strata due diligence, but I can't repeat enough. Even a brand new build of a duplex or a new condo, it really, really is helpful to make sure that everything has been done properly. I would never encourage someone to not have a property inspection. If you are yourself a qualified tradesperson, either a plumber or electrician um, or some other kind of trades, and you do have the knowledge to uh, either perform some of the work or look over work that other people have done, it's still a good idea to make sure that um, any alterations that are being done, if they require a permit, that a permit is done and pulled. And if, um, of course, you need to get your strata's permission, that it is received before anybody opens up their toolbox. Just saves everybody a lot of grief. Many stratas will require that your trades persons also carry adequate insurance in case they cause some damage that trickles down or triggers the strata deductible for like a water escape on a plumbing job or some type of electrical a problem in a building. Adding on appliances, adding on um, undermount lighting, or adding on um, additional uh, plugs 
does require a qualified electrician to come and make sure that the wiring is done safely and correctly. Wiring. Wiring. How are things wired? Well, old homes have a type of electrical wiring known as knob and tube. And many of these homes will be partially rewired. And there may be other wiring areas that were not able to be um, accessed at the time of the rewiring. Um, either they're in a wall that nobody wanted to open up or um, they've been decommissioned or not decommissioned. Um, quite often, if a home's only been partially renovated and it's prior to about 1945, 1950, it will have knob and tube wiring. The other kind of wiring that um, is, in my opinion, even more dangerous than knob and tube wiring, and your insurance broker often thinks so as well, is aluminum wiring. Aluminum wiring uh, was put in many homes through the uh, 70s and 80s because the price of copper skyrocketed um, during these recession times. So um, your qualified home inspector will be able to check for aluminum wiring. And it's definitely one of those checkbox items that your insurance broker will ask you about when you go to get home insurance, whether it's a detached home or a condominium. You will find that many condominiums that are in and around that 40, 45 year age bracket will have aluminum wiring. So um, there is a fix for that. And um, it basically consists of taking off all of the face plates for the um, electrical plugs and doing what's called pigtailing the aluminum wires to um, a copper kind of cap that just keeps everything from sparking. We don't want any sparkies happening in our plugs. So that brings me to another really easy, easy, easy fix it for the do-it-yourself homeowner is if you are getting your entire house painted and you have really ugly switch plates, especially those ones from, you know, the early 70s or 80s that are actually plastic um, and have discolored a lovely kind of yellow gross color. Go get yourself some nice modern looking white switch plates for your light switches. It will just make a whole bunch of difference. Um, and it'll help your new paint look even better. Um, doing small things like switching out your hardware um, in the bathrooms, maybe if you can't afford a full renovation, getting a new tap set where it fits nicely into the sink and doesn't wiggle, especially kitchen sinks that leak is one of my pet peeves on home inspections. And even sometimes new condos, they won't have caught a um, poorly installed sink um, and tap set in their final walkthrough on the new home delivery. So make sure if you're buying a new condo and you get to your new home delivery uh, walkthrough that you check all the taps. One of the other things when it comes to plumbing that an inspector will suggest, and I've seen this in every inspection where they're not already transferred over, is having braided hoses on your washer and dryer and on your toilets and in the dishwasher um, line between the dishwasher and where it hooks in under your sink usually um, to your sink assembly. Braided hoses are steel uh, reinforced hoses that um, are typically much stronger than anything made out of a PVC or plastic. And um, in some cases, you will have insurance brokers who will ask you if you have braided hoses on the wash machine, your dishwasher, and your toilets. And the bidet if you happen to have that kind of thing hooked up. So braided hoses. 
braided hoses will help in making sure that you have no small leaks or sometimes big leaks coming from your appliances that have water. Oh, and one of the other places it could come from is a refrigerator that has an ice maker. So I don't know, there's been quite a few times in my career where I've had phone calls from our cleaners that are doing either a move in or a move out clean and they pull out the fridge and they notice that there's actually in this one time it was quite bad because uh, the floor had rotted underneath the fridge and they were afraid to push it back. Um, but that the um, ice maker where it, the hose came out of the fridge at the back um, to connect to the uh, rest of the water had been leaking for years and it was a really, really slow little drip. Um, but over the years it had, deteriorated the linoleum and it had basically um, made the floor really wet underneath um, into the uh, floor into the plywood. So for your appliances, make sure that everything is tickety-boo by checking those hoses for things that have water and also um, checking for uh, gas leaks on gas appliances. One of my um, things that I have noticed about many gas stoves, especially the kind that have the buttons facing the front of the stove and not on top of the cooktop, is that it's really easy to bump into them and even nudge them just a little bit and have the gas turn on. Um, this is especially uh, important to keep in mind when you're having a cleaner over or maybe pets or people in your home that aren't used to your appliances is to make sure that the gas knobs are put back on properly by the cleaner if they get taken off or that they um, are not easily pushed by children or pets. Um, so when you're buying a new appliance set for your home, if you decide to do that, um, I would really suggest if you are getting gas uh, is that you get um a type of appliance where the knobs are on the top of the cooktop and not facing the front over top of the oven. I think that's a defect and they should not have allowed that because it's way too easy for it to get bumped into and or moved into a slightly on position where it hasn't actually ignited. Instead, it fills the house with gas. Nobody wants that. So um, I know this is a short and sweet one. Those were a few of my uh, top tips for ensuring your home is ready or if you're a buyer, things to look for on an inspection. And uh, I look forward to getting your questions and um, hearing from you. Please know that we are always here to help you at the Integrity Real Estate Group with uh, no obligation. We do have a full buyers and sellers program that we adhere to. And um, we love doing our jobs with integrity. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Take care.